Welcome to the podcast, Let the Prophet Speak. Today we are going to do the first part of chapter 25 of Jeremiah, that's 25a. <coughs> Excuse me. 25 is a long chapter, uh, but uh, there is kind of a logical division in the middle, so we're going to do verse 1 through 14, and then in the next one we're going to do 15 till the end. We just, um, in 24... Jeremiah was speaking um, uh, regarding a prophecy that occurred uh, during the um, kingdom of Yechania, of, of, of Yechania, the son of Yehoiakim. Um, and he had seen a, who was one of the last kings, not the last king, but one of the last kings. And and he had seen two baskets of figs. And remember, one basket of figs was fat and plump. And that was a sign of the promise to the people that would get exiled to Babylon, would unfortunately have to endure the slavery and the exile to Babylon, but would learn their lesson from it and learn humility and learn to come back to God, that those people were going to be like those juicy figs. They were going to come back to Jerusalem and rebuild it one day. The other basket of figs was withered away and nothing and and rotten. And that basket of figs was referring to the people that are still holding on to the idea that through their own strength they can still fight, they can make alliances with the other nations, learn from the ways of the other nations, and not fix their evil ways and not fix their corruptions those people were going to end up in exile and end up lost in exile and never to return. So this coming chapter, we're going to read again about this idea that, yes, there will be an exile, and it's going to be harsh and difficult, but that the people will come back from exile, or there will be an end to it. The purpose of the exile is not that the, that this should be over, that that's the end, but so that the people should learn their lessons there and then come back and reestablish the kingdom of Judea on its proper way. Um, this, is the, this chapter is the origin of the well-known idea that the exile of Babylon, the t- time period between the first and second temples, would, was to be a period of 70 years. Um, and we're about to read that. Another important principle we're going to read about today, and I just want to introduce it now, is the idea that even though God gives permission to the Babylonians in this case, or other nations to come and attack the people because the people are worthy of punishment, that does not justify the actions on the part of those attackers, those marauders, of acting cruelly and viciously to their victims. This is a kind of a... It's, it's, Part one of the uh, philosophical conundrums, you know, if someone, God forbid, gets punished, it suffers at the hands of another human being. Um, on the one hand, the person that's suffering feels it and thinks of it as, how could God do this to me? Or they might accept it upon themselves. This is, you know, God's will and accept God's will. But regardless, the person perpetrating, the one doing that action, never has an excuse. He can never say, I'm doing this because, you see, God lets me do it. That person will always have to pay for his cruelty. He never has permission to make another person suffer and claim that he did it because, you see, God let him do it. We're going to deal with that issue here as well. So let's start chapter 25. This is out of sync. Um, remember the chapter 24, one we just read, actually occurred several years later than what we're about to read now. Um, uh, this word that came to Jeremiah, al kolam Yehuda, regarding the entire nation of Judah, it came when Bashanoh HaRaviyat, during the fourth year of the Yehoiakim, of the leadership of Yehoiakim ben Yoshiyahu, who is the son of Josiah, um, Melech Yehuda, the king of Judah, he harishonit which was also the first year of the reign of Nebuchadrezzar. Now we know that Nebuchadrezzar is going to be the king that will ultimately destroy the temple 
and bring about the destruction. The um, the uh, uh, Yehoiakim was the son of Yoshiahu Josiah. Josiah, as we know, was a righteous king who made a fatal error at the end of his life and tried to fight off the Egyptians as they passed through the land of Israel at the famous Battle of Megiddo, and Josiah was killed. And when that happened, um, the uh, his son, Yehoiakim, took over as king. Well, actually, Yehoahaz took over, but he only reigned for several months. And then after that, Yehoiakim took over, who reigned for several years. And this particular... Um, uh, prophecy that we're reading now happened during the reign of Yehoiakim, who Asher Diber Yirmiyoha Navi, this is the word we just said that, that Jeremiah had heard from God, and then he spoke this word, El Kol Amuda, as directed by God, he spoke this word, this is verse 2, to the entire nation, Be'el Kol Yosh Yerushalayim Lamar, and to all of those residents of Jerusalem. So he had an audience, the people heard the message, and this was the message that they heard. And he said as follows, Min shalosh esrei shana li Yoshiyahu ven Amon, Melech Yehuda ve'ad hayom hazeh. From the 13th year of the reign of Josiah, remember we know that Josiah, the king who had been killed in the battle of Megiddo, Josiah who was a righteous king, during his reign, 13 years into his reign, from then, I have started, I have been prophesying, I have been saying this message. Remember, in the beginning, we learned that Jeremiah started to say his prophecies during the reign of Josiah. So that's what Jeremiah is saying now. From the 13th year of his reign, I was already giving you these speeches. I was already telling you this following message, the message that I've been saying all this time and that I'm about to repeat again. The, the, the king the 13th year of the reign of Josiah, the son of Ammon, the king of Judah, the Adayomazel, down to this day, I've never stopped giving you that message, which is a total of Shalosh V'Yatsrim Shana, a total of 23 years, starting from the 13th year of Josiah's reign all the way until the fourth year of Yehoiakim, his son's reign. This is uh, that uh, the commentators explain how that adds up to 23 years. The word of God has been upon me. And I have been speaking to you about this. I have been careful and persistent in speaking with you, but you have not listened to my message. I've been saying this over and over again. And not only me. In verse 4 he continues, God has sent to you all of his servants, the prophets. There have been many other prophets, those of that have been studying this um, this podcast with me since I started, have already heard many of those prophets that have spoken during the times of the kings that preceded. This message has been consistently and repeatedly been told to you. V'shaloach, and despite them being sent to you, v'lo shimatem, you still did not listen. And you have not till turned your ears to pay attention to the message that God is trying to send you through his prophets. Lamar, what was the message that they have been saying, that I have been saying this whole time? Each and every person, please, they, we begged you, I've begged you, change your ways, return from your evil ways and from your evil um, actions. Ushavu Allah Adama, and if you do that, if you change your ways, you get rid of your corruptions, then you will remain upon this land. Destruction will not come. You will remain here, Asher, on this land, Asher Natan Adonai the land that God has given to you and to your fathers, the Minolam Yarolam, from this world all the way forever. This is land that you could stay on. That is how you stay. That is how you avert destruction. The way to not have to worry about getting conquered, getting destroyed, getting exiled, losing battles, the way to do that is by living in a, pro- a proper and ethical and moral life the way God has commanded you. And don't start going over to those other gods. Don't try to make alliances with the other nations that are going to teach you evil ways, that are going to teach you ways of superstition, ways of, of worshipping idols, 
things that, that lead to corruption, things that lead to thinking that you don't have to live a good life in order to get God's favor. All you need to do is sacrifice to this, sacrifice to that, Let's make a ritual here, make a ritual there, to worship those idols, and to bow to them. And stop making me angry with the works of your own hands. As we've seen repeatedly refers to the idols that you create by yourselves. Worshipping the human creations, worshipping human strength, thinking that you have the power so that you don't have to be good, you just have to be strong and powerful. You can oppress others. That you don't have to be good. All you need to do is be powerful and build these idols. And then I will not be bad to you and I will not need to punish you. This is the message that God had been saying. Verse 7, However, you did not listen to me, no Madonai, says God, in such a way that all you did was make me angry with the with your actions, so that you caused me to come to punish you. Therefore, says Jeremiah in verse 8, in the name of God, so says God, because you did not listen to me, this is what's going to happen. And I am going to send and I am going to take all of the families of the north, those nations that are allied with Babylon. No Madonai says God. And I am going to send for my my servant, the king Nebuchadrezzar, the king of Babylon. It is odd to use the language Avdi, my servant. However, it's using this language um, because in this sense, Nebuchadrezzar is being given permission to, um, to, to destroy Israel, to be the hand of God and bring about the destruction of Israel. So we have seen it similar in Isaiah 10 verse 5 where it says hoy ashur shevet api it was referring to the assyrians who were going to come and eventually did come and destroy the northern kingdom they were shevet api they were the the staff of my fury so even though they were coming and doing something which ultimately was bad but they were still in a sense doing the message uh, doing the the um the um will of God. And I'm going to bring the Babylonians and all of their allies upon this land and upon those that reside here and also against all of those nations with whom you tried to make alliances. Remember the people of Judea were constantly trying to make alliances with the other nations and by, the, by doing that they were learning from them their ways, their corruptions, their idol worship and their ideas that that it that 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 through those kinds of um, activities they would somehow be able to save themselves, and that's corrupt because they should have known what the prophets were teaching them that the way to save themselves is by living God's way, by being moral, by ending the corruption. But all those nations that they tried to ally themselves with, Saviv, that are around them, Biacharam Tim, I'm going to destroy. This, destroy them all. In other words, they, the attackers, are going to destroy them all. V'sam tim I'm going to make them uh, uh, for desolation. V'lishreka, and people are going to just hiss at them and 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 just, ugh, they're going to say to those nations because they're they're going to be destroyed. They're going to be nothing. And they'll be destroyed forever. V'havaratimehem, and I'm going to destroy from them kol sason, the sounds of happiness, the kol simchan, the sounds of joy, kol chatan, the sounds of the uh, groom, kol kalan, the sounds of a bride, kol rechayim, the sounds of the mill grinding grain, vr aner, and the light of a fire. All of these are symbols and signs of plenty and happiness and growth. I'm going to destroy all of that from these nations. V'yaita kol aretzazos, and this entire land of Judea will be l'charba, destroy l'shama, it will be desolate. V'yavdu ha-goyim and all of these nations that Babylon is going to conquer and destroy, are then, instead of worshipping those meaningless idols and engaging in rituals, rituals that are destructive, rituals that are not just meaningless but destructive, they are instead going to be enslaved 
to at Melech Bavel, the king of Babylon, Shivim Shana, for 70 years. This number of 70 years could be seen as a specific number of 70 years, or it can also be looked, if we had several times, the Radak has explained in other commentaries, that 70 is simply a, a long time, generations. When someone looks ahead 70 years, they see that it's, it's not so far off in the future that it's never going to happen, but it's very far off in the future that the person that's, that's being spoken to is not going to ever see it. 70 years is beyond that lifetime. So 70 years is a terminology that's often used in that type of context. Vayachim lot shivim shana will be when these 70 years are up. This is verse 12. F code, then I am going to punish Amalek Bavel, the king of Babylon. Remember, just like we saw back, and I just mentioned before, in Isaiah chapter um, chapter uh, um, 10, uh, where God's called at the Assyria the, the staff of my fury. But then God said that he's going to punish Assyria for his actions. The same thing here. God is saying that Babylon is going to come and destroy. But that doesn't give them the right to act in a cruel and punishing way. It's like if you think about the person that gives someone a slap in the face, if he then tells himself, well, God must have wanted the guy to get a slap because otherwise he wouldn't have let me do it. So what I did was the right thing. Well, obviously, that's kind of a messed up, a very messed up idea. You have never have the right to hurt someone else. Even if God is, calling, is saying you have the right to conquer them, that doesn't give you the right to enslave them, to humiliate them, to slaughter, to rape, to pillage, etc. Those things you never have the right to do, and it's going to come back against you. So I am going to remember and punish the king of Babylon. The Allah Goya, who went on that nation of Babylon, Noma Adonai says, God at Avonam, I'm going to punish them for their sins. The Allah at Skastim, and against the land of the Chaldeans. Remember, the Chaldeans were allies of the Babylonians. I'm going to make that land a land that's destroyed forever. And I'm going to bring against that land, the land of Babylon, that called of her eye, all of those things that I have spoken about it. This is a reference to the things which we are going to see as we learn through this book of Jeremiah. Also, if you remember, Isaiah 13 also discusses the future um, punishments that will be visited upon the people of Babylon, the nation of Babylon, because of the ruthlessness with which they crushed all of the nations around them. Uh, everything that is written in this book, Asher Niba Yirmiyahu Al Kol Hagayim, that Yirmiyahu, that Jeremiah has prophesied regarding all of the nations. Remember, on many occasions we've already stated Jeremiah is a prophet for all of the nations. The lessons of, of humility, the lessons of morality that he's teaching was meant for everyone. So many of these nations are going to be destroyed now by the Babylonians. And because the Babylonians won't learn these lessons, they will also be eventually destroyed, as Jeremiah said. Because they too, the Babylonians and the Chaldeans, they enslaved many nations. They made many people suffer. And many kingdoms and kings. I will repay them according to their actions and according to what they do. The cycle of history is what we've just read about. The cycle of history that keeps going around and around. <coughs> yes, God will meet, bring the Babylonians to punish the people of Judah and the people of, of, of the nations that surrounded Judah that were corrupt. But then God will come back and punish the Babylonians because of their corruption and because of their cruelty. Until we learn the lesson that this is not what God wants, until we learn the lesson of humility that what God wants is for us to end corruption, to have pity and mercy for the, the orphan and the widow, to have a justice system that meets out real justice for the poor and the rich alike, until we all recognize that, all the nations recognize that, we're going to constantly be going through this cycle of destruction. I'm going to stop here. This will be the end of 25A. Look, thank you so much for joining me for this part. Looking forward to studying chapter 25, I mean the second half of chapter 25 together. So.